This is Beppu, a city in Oita Prefecture, southern Japan. Beppu is famous in Japan for having the most amount of hot springs. It is the onsen capital of Japan. While you could genuinely spend a week trying all the different onsens here, there are plenty of other reasons why you should consider adding Beppu to your Japan itinerary. In this video, we're going to show you the top six things to do in Beppu, all of which can be done in just two days. Now, before we start, I'm going to preface this by saying that although you can reach most of these places on public transport, we highly, highly recommend you rent a car. Beppu is surprisingly big and its public transport system, mainly buses, run infrequently. Make your life a thousand times easier by renting a car. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of the video, when we'll give you our detailed two-day Beppu itinerary. And with that, let's begin. This is Hyotan Onsen, the only three Michelin star onsen in the whole of Japan. It is a really great deal as well, costing all around 700 yen for entry. It's amazing. There's waterfall bars, steam bars, rock bars, salt bars, sand bars, private bars. There's so much to do here. You can easily spend hours here. We've hired ourselves a private bath in this onsen, which I would definitely recommend for families and couples and also maybe if you're just a bit shy of getting naked in front of other people it's a great option. We've tried to book private onsens before in Kansai but it was always so expensive but here even though it's a really fancy onsen it was actually really cheap. This one is about 2,500 yen for an hour in this private onsen and you do get this outdoor bath and a steam room and a plunge pool all for your own private use so it's a really good deal. An interesting thing about the private onsens in Hyotan is that when you arrive, they are completely empty. You are given a sort of coin token thing which you put into a slot which then turns the water on and you fill it up yourself. And when you're finished in Hyotan, you can try drinking some of the onsen water or insen or you can enjoy eating an onsen cooked egg. This is Takegawara Onsen, one of the most famous onsens in the whole of Beppu. Takegawara offers you a very historic Japanese feel in your onsen experience. It was originally built in 1879 using a traditional Meiji era architecture. One of the best things about Takegawara is that it's really, really cheap. It's only 300 yen to use the public bath inside. As well as looking like something straight out of a Ghibli movie, Takegawara also has a sand bath inside, which costs about a thousand yen to use, which makes Takegawara an essential part of any Beppu visit. So we're here at the Beppu Beach sand bath. We're about to have a sand bath onsen experience. We've done this once before in Kagoshima. It's really good fun. Basically, they bury you in the sand. You feel really nice and warm. And you have a good time. The Beppu Beach sand bath sits directly over a hot spring, and its thermal water is used to flood these two sand pits, heating them to over 42 degrees. They are then drained before visitors are allowed to enter. You are given a yukata to wear at reception, which is included in the 1,500 yen ticket price. Once dressed, you are then buried in the sand by the workers. The deeper you're buried, the hotter it is, so be sure to say how hot you want it. Once buried, you are left to relax for about 15 minutes before being dug out. What makes it so special here is the unique view of the sea and Oita Bay, which adds to the amazing experience. Check me out, I'm looking pretty sandy. That was so much fun. Although I'm a bit sweaty now, it's really hot in the sand. It's like steaming and you get really hot. It's like good for your circulation, but um, good stuff. Very enjoyable, very enjoyable. I'd highly recommend doing this. Very good fun. Arguably the main attraction in the whole of Beppu, the Seven Hells are an essential part of any Oita Beppu visit. 
They are a collection of natural hot springs with various different geological features. From bubbling mud to steaming geysers and fiery pools, the Hells can easily take up a whole morning or afternoon of your trip. We have already made an in-depth video about the Seven Hells of Beppu, so to watch that, click the box here or follow the link in the description below. Don't forget to like this video before you go and subscribe to stay up to date with our future videos. Every like and new subscriber means so much to us and it really, really helps. One of the best things that you can do in Beppu is to get really involved in the onsens and try cooking your own food with the steam from the onsens. We are at Jigoku Mushi. This is a restaurant where you can cook your own food using the steam coming up from the ground. So let's go check it out. So we're here inside Jigoku Mushi and you order at a vending machine and you wait a little while and they give you your food like this. And I guess we then go, I guess we then go steam it. Steam cooking is a very popular way to cook food in Beppu and has been saving locals on their gas and electricity bills for centuries. Jigoku Mushi is a food hall slash restaurant run by a mix of volunteers and staff. You can buy food from them like we've done or you can bring your own food and rent the steamers for only a few hundred yen. And here we are, 15 minutes later, our food is ready. I just have to put on my thick gloves to protect me from the steam. Let's take a look. Oh. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I should have ordered more. Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting major food envy of this here. I got wrapped, wrapped rice and uh, steamed vegetables. Apparently the onsen steam makes the food get the minerals from the onsen. So extra healthy. I went for the herb chicken and vegetables. Yeah, I mean it, it smells good but uh, it looks a bit depressing compared to everyone else's food. This is Takasakiyama Monkey Park. It's a popular monkey park in between the city of Beppu and Oita and it's home to over 1,500 monkeys. And basically this park was made because monkeys were causing mayhem, so they keep them here by feeding them at this monkey park. So they are wild monkeys, they're free to roam anywhere on the mountain, but they feed them here in order to keep them from getting into trouble. There are actually three troops of monkeys that live on this mountain, and they used to come down at different times of the day to feed. But after a fight in 2002, one troop will no longer come down. It's actually really nice at Mount Takasakiyama because there's no monkey enclosure. The monkeys all live on the mountain and they just choose to come down at different times during the day to feed over there. I've never seen so many baby monkeys in my entire life. They're literally everywhere. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them in this troop alone. And there are three troops, obviously. Mount Takasakiyama is actually a Buddhist temple that has been sort of taken over by the monkeys and the monkey park sits within the ground of the temple. It's really interesting because you can see the monkeys and all the sort of Buddhist architecture which is really, really cool. For only 520 yen, the Takasakiyama monkey park is really great value. For those who don't want to walk up the steep slope, there is a monorail available and there are regular feeding times which can get pretty crazy. You can combine the monkey park with the Umitamago Aquarium, the largest in Oita, as it's only a five minute walk from the monkey park. The monkey marine ticket costs 2,550 yen and gets you access to both. This is Kifune Castle. Now we 100% recommend that you come here on your way between the two areas of the Hells in Beppu. The reason for this, 
you get an unbelievable view of the city of Beppu in all its glory. We paid 300 yen to come into the castle grounds and the castle itself and that's such a good deal because you get such good view over Beppu city and also you can come up here we're basically on the roof getting a really 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 great view and um, you're allowed to walk anywhere inside the castle as well just by yourself which is really nice. Kafune castle is famous for having this white snake that if you touch you will uh, get money apparently. I feel quite bad for this snake though. Another great place to get a look at Beppu in all its glory is Mount Surumi. That's where we are now. It is a big mount open mountainside where you can get a real good look at the city. You can see Beppu, the Oita Bay, and in the distance, Oita itself. On a really clear day, you can even see Shikoku in the distance. Mount Surumi is a large mountain that arches around the city, providing numerous viewpoints with different scenery. We're here as there are a number of remote open air onsens in this area, which unfortunately were too busy to use. However, I'd recommend coming up here even if the open air onsens aren't really your sort of thing because the view is amazing. This is the UK Murray Observatory. It's arguably one of the best spots where you can see the steam rising out over the city of Beppu. Beppu is actually home to a festival where they set fire to this mountainside. It happens in April every year, so if you're here in April, come here and check it out. And there you have it. Those are the top six things to do in Beppu. Now, as promised, here is our detailed two-day Beppu itinerary. This is the exact same one that we used during our time in Beppu. And while they're two quite packed days, with a rental car, you can definitely do it. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to stay up to date with our future content, please consider subscribing. We will see you again in the next video. Goodbye.